And now, live from the studios of Freedom's Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. For here on Declare Your Independence of Me, Ernest Hancock here in Phoenix, Arizona from the BEA. Beautiful studios of Freedoms with an S, freedomsphoenix.com. I'm uh, on with Kathleen McClellan. She's with Government Accountability Project, and she's attorney for a gentleman, Mr. John Drake, uh, Thomas Drake, that was featured on 60 Minutes last night. And they have an article that we just got it up at the top of Freedoms Phoenix. The New Yorker article that went on to detail a lot of things that Kathleen can share with us now, because I'm, it's always a money thing. Follow the money. You know, who, who made the money? They need to change this, do this. Didn't even start that. They promised, and this is all great. And oh, no, we don't need that anymore. We got a new contractor over here. And if you follow it back and back and back, you can find out who gave who money for what. And now he's Obama's buddy. So I'm just, let's go ahead and start there. Okay, Kathleen, tell me this software that, uh, Mr. Drake was complaining about and the waste and fraud and abuse and all this kind of stuff. Uh, who was behind it financially? Well, it's interesting that you described it as software because, uh, you know, Trailblazer, the, the program that he was really complaining about, didn't even really get to software. It was stalled at the level of schematic drawings. And um, the New Yorker points out that the top executives at the NSA kept moving between uh, jobs at the NSA and jobs with high-paying contractors. For example, uh, during the Trailblazer debacle, uh, both uh, then the head of NSA, General Michael Hayden's deputy director, and his chief of the Signals Intelligence Programs worked at SAIC, which is a massive, massive government contractor. And SAIC won several hundred million dollars in Trailblazer contracts. And then, what did the taxpayers get for all of that? In 2006, uh, Trailblazer was thrown out as a $1.2 billion mess. So he took their PDF uh, of a sketch on a napkin and said, we're going to do something else. Uh, basically. Go that's essentially it. what happened. All right. I'm so shocked. So what are they concerned with? Now, are they concerned with that the software never went anywhere or it was just a fraud perpetrated on taxpayer to get somebody some uh, money because we said we were kind of working at it and doing and thinking about and, and then we didn't and we went to something else? Well, I think, you know, the problem was it never really got off the ground and it the, so know, where did a billion laser. dollars go? Well, you know, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, you know, I think that the Inspector General report that vindicated the complaint about the wasteful money on Trailblazer would help define that. Unfortunately, it's classified. You can see it on the Department of Defense Inspector General's website. It's called Intelligence Audit of the Thin Thread and Trailblazer Systems or something to that effect. Okay, so, but, we're, so we're in a situation, it's just a modernized version of $600 hammers. Is that what we're dealing with? I mean, I think that it's even less than that. It's not even hammers. It's like pictures of hammers. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. So we're I getting, mean, we're getting pictures of hammers. <laughs> we're getting pictures of, 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 of a program that was supposed to solve this problem of massive amounts of data, but, you know, they had shelved a program that would have been a fraction of the cost, a few, a few million dollars, not billion dollars, a few million dollars. They had shelved that program, and that program had solved the problem. The problem was solved, and instead they went with this, um, you know, a series of uh, schematic drawings <laughs> and, and charged, charged the taxpayers $1.2 billion for Okay, it. now let's go. I want to uh, talk about you a little bit and your experiences in dealing with, I mean, you didn't all of a sudden just become this guy as an attorney without some kind of experience in dealing with the government prosecuting people, right? Well, sure. And, I, you know, it's, it's important to point out that uh, here at GAP, at the Government Accountability Project, we're not uh, Tom Drake's criminal defense team. He's actually represented by the Federal Public Defender's Office. We're representing him on whistleblower uh, advocacy issues only. Okay. My concern is, is that I don't want the real important issues in this to get lost and to look at, you know, this, whether he did or didn't do something or their waste, fraud and abuse and this and that, and they're going after, and, you know, uh, from a, you, know, you do the anarchist uh, libertarian thing and you're going, yeah, you know, do away with the government, you know, you, all these kind of problems go away. But, you know, people, they're going to say, no, we got to have government to, 
I don't know, fill in the blank, whatever reason. But if you're going to have it, it's there to defense of individual rights. I mean, that's the whole promise that they make to us. You know, okay, you need us because if it wasn't for us, then you would die or be dead or or be in slavery by somebody else. So you need us to enslave you so you won't be enslaved. Okay, so that's that that's the promise that they're making. They're going to protect us. Well, when they don't, when they you have such a blatant and obvious uh, abuse of them by pointing out that they're abusing American citizens, I'm wondering at what point do you have a philosophical argument to put out? I mean, when does it finally get to where it's just the government in general is a problem? It can't be fixed. Or certainly this administration has to be seen as worse than the one previous when they came in promising to clean it up. At some point, you got to be you know, thinking that it can't get fixed. It's never going to get fixed. These people prey on the desire of Obama and whoever his supporters were and the people in the administration and cabinet members. And they want to, well, every president wants another administration, okay? So I'm going, what do we have to look forward to? Well, I think there's actually, I, we do need a government. I think that's certain. And I think that, you know, the, the, the democratic model and our government can work. And it can work only, though, if people care about it. And to that end, I'm going to do my little plug for we have a petition on change.org urging Congress to do some oversight here. They were apparently, you know, asleep, uh, asleep at the wheel when all of this trailblazer debacle was going on. And we have a petition also asking uh, Attorney General Holder and we'll deliver it to him as well, to drop the prosecution. So I think, you know, government can work and democracy can work, but it can only work if people stand up and raise their hand and pay attention to it. And to that end, you know, there's actually a lot of great people. I mean, these people who, Thomas Drake and the other people who were quoted in the New Yorker story, there are two other former NSA officials, uh, Bill Binney and Kirk Wiebe, and a former congressional staffer, Diane Work. These are real public servants. These are long-time career government employees, and they're not bleeding-heart liberals. They all consider themselves conservative. Uh, Drake, Rourke, and Binney are, are registered Republicans. These are people who saw their role in government at the NSA as protecting the nation, and Diane Rourke, as an overseer, saw her, her role as making sure the taxpayers' money was spent correctly. So, you know, I think that what we need to do is to change our institutions and change our laws such that good people are protected when they want to bring up waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and that the, the, the sort of corporate solution, the, the corporate thinking of government is not dominating. And that's what happened within the NSA is, you know, uh, I think Diane Rourke says in the New Yorker article that uh, Director Hayden didn't want anybody contradicting his pet programs. In fact, he sent an email to after he found out that uh, Drake and or that um, that uh, Binney and Weeby had been to Congress, and someone had spoken then, not them, but someone had spoken to Congress about uh, Thin Thread as opposed to Trailblazer and how Trailblazer was kind of a waste of money. Hayden sent an email to the entire NSA workforce, and part of the, a quote in that email, this is also in the New Yorker piece, says that actions contrary to our decisions will have serious adverse effect on our efforts to transform NSA, and I cannot tolerate them. And so it's that kind of mentality, that kind of culture that corrupts institutions and, let, and stifles people who are trying to do good work and do it cheaply and do it legally, which is what, uh, which is what Binney was doing when he invented Thin Thread. You know, I'm... I and I appreciate your advocacy there, and, and I think you probably did as good a job as anyone can. My my thing is, is that um, this is what government always devolves to. And I'm wondering, I'm not against, you know, people making whatever, as long as it's not coercive and you're not putting a gun to my head to make me fund it or do it. You know, I'm like, hey, you come up with a good idea, let's do it. So then, of course, you have... Uh, other campaigns that are advocating for what you're talking about. You know, if we're going to have a government, it better be, you know, for, by, and of, and serve our interests, which is what? Our individual rights. Can we do that? Kathleen thinks you can. What do you have to do? We're going to talk about it more when we come back. What do you have to do? We'll be right back. 